Charge beam should be pretty helpful. what that's for. this earlier. Let's see if I can do it. Other way. There we go. I had a hell with that in my first playthrough. Guess it was laughing at me so much. I was so ashamed of my Metroid skills. So shameful. Not that I'm probably not gonna suck at some parts of this at least. Especially given I'm not really used to playing Metroid with an Xbox controller, so you may have to bear with me. But whatever, we'll make it work. Alright. Uh I guess opens up a left would be the best way to go. Space jump with true attack. <laughs> I don't know how to get a space jump. <sighs> I 
not not that advanced of a Metro player. I'm sorry. Yeah, fuck, I don't even save. Just to be safe. I never did finish exploring the roof of this the ceiling. Because if I remember correctly, there is at least a missile tank up here. Let me just get past these guys. This is the fun part right here. further off to the left past that save room, so we we'll go check that out. Ah, uh, yes, the dreaded football helmet room. Future that they they carried over from uh, Metroid Prime actually. Let's see if I go to the pause menu, then the little side menu thing here. I think it's the one to the left. Yeah. All right. All this stuff. 
kind of cool. It's like, uh, in Metroid Prime, the first 3D game in the series, they had this feature called the Scan Visor, where you could switch to your visor to that, and then you could shoot, you could do combat with it, but you could kind of analyze your environment with it, look around at different objects, different enemies, you could scan bosses and find out their weak points. And it was a really cool way of like adding more and story elements to the game. Uh, while making it kind of optional. And just making it fun. You know, it, one thing I always liked with Metroid is it doesn't shove the story in your face. Except for other M. You know, but most of the time it doesn't shove it in your face. You don't have a whole lot of cutscenes or whatever. You can pretty much just focus on playing the game the whole way through. But if you want the lore, if you like the story elements, that's still there. And you can always it, it's just you choose to investigate it further. So yeah. Really cool if they put this stuff in the game. Uh because the original Metroid 2 definitely did not have it. And another really useful feature is just this right here, just the map. Uh, Metroid didn't have an in-game map feature until Super Metroid on the SNES. And just, like, I mean, I think with just that alone, if they had no other, nothing else new carried over from the original Metroid and Metroid 2, but it just took that if it added the map that alone would have probably been enough to make Super Metroid leagues better than the original, uh, the, the first two games. Way more playable, so this definitely helps with the uh, remake here. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's go off to the right. And I think there's another Metroid in this room too. Should be. Yeah, every time you see one of those shells, those Metroid shells, you know there's going to be one coming. I'm pretty sure it's in this room. Should be coming up right this any second now. There it is. Ah. Almost. I think there's one more hit. One more hit. Oh. Okay. Okay, it was more than one more hit, but whatever. Okay. Whoa, fucker. Alright, so that's two Metroids left. What's down here? Looks like more Metroids. Tiny platforms. Okay. Yeah, it's the Metroids are definitely a lot harder to fight in this game than they were in the original. I'll tell you that. Okay. Udo boss. Just one more left for this area. Hmm. All right. And it might be in this room. Yep. Oh, I'm running, ah. God damn it. Got him. Boom. Okay. And with that... are just out of reach too, great. <laughs> Alright, well with that. Yep, shoulders shaking, scream shaking. Earth is quaking. And that means lava should have receded. To area to get to area 
two or three, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna go save. I'll go ahead and make it to the next area and then find a save point, and I think I'll just stop there. Sounds like a plan. Should be right there under the blue. Oh crap. Oh no. This guy's a motherfucker. Flying over cream pies. Everything. All right, this was the part that used to be filled up with lava. So now, if I just keep going down below, continue deeper into the planet. Should take me to the next area. What's this? Okay, that looks tough. We have to come back here. And I have another power up. Oh, well, speaking of power ups, there's a missile tank. There too. I don't even see that. Oh, okay. I think that will be later. Yeah. Okay. Seven Metroids in the area.
Don't know if this one's supposed to be good, but let's try it. Eh. I'll do that later, actually. Probably the high jump or something. Space jump, maybe, I don't know. That'll be later. Some of these Metroid games work if you're not familiar with them. Uh, basically, you get one big map, as you can explore, and a lot of power-ups you can collect, as you've seen, and you use those to advance through the game and get past different obstacles. So, like, as you might, as you play the game, you can encounter stuff that you can't quite get through yet with your current uh, loadout. So, you have to go back and explore more. Oh, crap. Already one Metroid down. That actually surprised me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, you get to areas where you can't really progress, so you gotta go back, find, explore, and find a new power-up. And then, eventually, you go back to that obstacle, and then you have the, once you have the proper upgrade, you can finally get through it and make it further in the game. And that's kind of how these work. And yeah, the original Metroid was kind of groundbreaking for that, for its time. And Metroid 2 kind of built on some of that. It was it was limited in some other ways, for sure, but it definitely built on a lot of the elements from uh, the original game. If it's Super Metroid, when that one came out, that just blew the others out of the water, and it's considered like one of the best games of all time. You know, so it's just for Metroid nerds like me, but a lot of gaming nerds in general just consider it just one of the best. So like, yeah, if you haven't played a Metroid game and you consider yourself a gamer, you owe it to yourself to try one of them, at least. I would recommend Super Metroid is great, a great one to start with. I would still probably say Zero Mission. Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance is still probably the best place to start if you can find it. Even if you have to like download a ROM or something, uh, it's a fucking great game. Uh, and an excellent starting point in the series, so yeah. Classic stuff. Yeah. I explore another one of these big ass rooms. I remember Metroid 2 has a lot of rooms like this, where they're just ridiculously huge. Sure, why not? Let's see what's up here. I'm really just looking for a save point, though. Oh, this is what's over here. Okay. Speedy old fucker. Got him. Alright, two down already. Always gotta check every little crevice. See if there might be any secret passages or power ups waiting there for me. Because they'll do that in these Metroid games. Uh. Yeah, I'll go here. Why not? Oh crap. He had another. Ah, oh, you just sort of low. Ow. Motherfucker. guys are tough. Hopefully I can just get to a save point now. Hopefully. It's already three of the seven Metroids now from this area. I mean, okay, granted I'm probably exploring a little more than I need to already. I'm just trying to get to the save point. But there's gotta be something. Ah, what a fucker. Alright, I see- I think there's one over here, if I remember right. Here we go. Okay. 
So I'm going to stop recording right here and then stay tuned for episode two where we'll explore more of this area. Thanks for watching.